dogs, birds, fishes, um, anything. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Novak Properties Podcast Morning Minutes with hosts Michael Bergio and Mark Novak. Uh, you're an animal. This morning, we will be talking about uh, rental properties, mainly residential rental properties, and for prospective tenants uh, with animals, cats, dogs, birds, fishes, um, anything and everything, what they can approved and landlords what to watch out for when an applicant has an animal. Um, I think in this day and age, it's becoming more and more popular. G'day, Mark's coming on, Max live. Let me just add, why isn't it ma- not letting me add him in? Hang on. Sorry, just seeing why it says it's connecting. Yep. (laughs) Mr. Novak, good morning. Animal. How are you, Animal? Good, good. I think we just give it 30 seconds because this audio always wigs out. So we may as well just sit here silent. Hang on. I think when... It's wigging. Yeah, now it's good. It just wigs every 30 seconds. So I reckon we just have a 30 second minute of silence every time we connect and then it's a lot smoother. So carry on. <laughs> carry on, carry on. We've got good audio, good visual. We're ready to go. Yeah, the heart's coming through. We've got Mac on, Nathan on, Higgs is on. All righty. Hey, animal. everyone. Good morning. Let's, your animal, let's, let's educate animal. Um, let's talk about um, getting animals into strata schemes. Mm. Tips, tricks, and hacks. Well, first of all... Really good experience we had done. Well, first of all, why don't people want animals? As a landowner, good morning, Jeff. Like, what's what's people's fear? And then what's the way around it to address it? Hey, Jeff. Uh, Okay, so people don't want animals in a building because they're not animal lovers. Uh, They don't want animals in a building because they don't don't want the noise. They don't want animals in the the building because they they shit and piss in the foyer. They don't want animals because they're scared yep. of them. Um, and probably, yeah. Probably and damage. Hyg- yeah, and damage. Hygiene and carpet. And, and, and noise. Damage. damage in the foyer. So, but the reality is that they're pretty good. And the reality is that they, there's not too much hassles with them. Okay. So, as a prospective tenant, when you're applying for a rental property and you've got an animal, what are the. What, does it, what are the steps to get it approved? What are the hurdles? You've got landlord and you've got strata. Look, oh, it's a bloody hard one as a tenant. It's a bloody hard one as a, as a tenant. You know, look, as a landlord, it's an opportunity to make a little bit more money because people will pay more money for a pet. So um, we've got circumstances where people pay 50, 60 bucks more for a dog. Uh, are you okay day today, Luke? Hey, Luke. We're... Are you okay? Very good. Luke, are you, are you okay? Yeah, you okay, Luke? Michael, you I'm okay? Perfect. It's a big day today. Another another big thing. Another straying away a little bit, but another big thing is um, it, the new new uh, iPhone was. Yeah, launched. I saw that. My bills up, not my bill. My plans up. Yeah, that's going to be new. But apparently, it doesn't connect to five G. So, yeah. not that I really know what that means, but can you believe it? Can you believe it? Super speeds of high G, five G. They're not. Um, they're not going to be doing. But back to pets. Um, so if you're a tenant and you want to get a te- uh, uh, your your um, uh, dog or cat into a property, pay a little bit more, pay a bit of freight for it. Um, another idea is dog references. Yep. Um, another idea is a um, a dog resume yeah. and dog. So um, actually, uh, and a yeah. dog bond as well. That sort of goes with it. Yeah, look, it's pretty hard. Um, in residential leases, we can't take more than four weeks. Oh, can't you t- okay, my bad. Um, so it's a pretty hard. <laughs> no, it's it's a pretty hard one to get more. But you can always offer to pay your tenancy insurance. Yep. Um, you know, twenty five thousand dollars malicious damage. Hey, Mister Landlord, I'll pay the first year of tenancy insurance if you let me allow my dog come in. Uh, hey, Mister Landlord, I'll pay you an extra extra in rent if you let my dog come in. Hey, Mr. Landlord, here's my references and my resume and my dog, me with my dog in the park, me with my dog with my kids, me with my dog with mm. my grandma. 
sort of photos and put it in the rental application. Uh, what about purchasing a place? Want to have and there's no and there's uh, no pets policy. Yeah, so that's uh, a big one. I know we um, Lisa worked a magic on a property and got uh, worked her way around that. But I think a lot of the policies is and we're correct me if I'm wrong here. We're not talking about um, what's the word? Say if you're vision impaired and you got support animal because I think that surpasses any rule. If you or is that yeah straight so away? That, yeah, so yeah, we're not talking away. about that, guys. We're talking about yeah, guide yeah, dog, guide, guide dogs. Yeah, guide dogs surpass any rule. As far as I'm aware, there's no state, there's no bylaw yeah. anyone can implement that can restrict that. Um, but we're talking more for your fun no. dog, legend, well, legend, play around, whatever. Um, yeah, look, there, and there's been there's that le- the dog. legislation on companionship is yeah. pretty Thanks big. Nicole. Service dog, That's service dog, um, and companionship is a big one now these days. So. Um, I think that um, I think everyone's got depression and anxiety mm. um, officially yeah. <laughs> somewhere in, in their in their body or brain. Uh, I actually I, I probably honestly believe that actually I think every, there's there's a slither or a splinter within everyone, yeah. and it is is national. Uh, it is that national day today. Are you okay day? So it's rele- I guess that's relevant again. Um, but I think that uh, you know to get from a doctor. Um, a support letter um, saying that you uh, you could you know that that um, the dog helps you with that um, anxiety or helps you with that um, yep. depression um, is a very very good way of getting getting a pet in as well if you suffer from that um, so that's one to yep. keep up your sleeve um, I, and I should say if you unfortunately yeah. suffer from that um, that's that's a way to get your companion yep. and pussycat or your companion. What dog about if in. you don't? You, you just got a dog for fun, play it just chills around the house. So and Strata has a no dog policy, or they're like, if the dog's under four kilos and poos once a week and doesn't make noise, is that similar to the rentals, or what do you what do you do there? Because keep in mind, you're about to buy a million dollar property, and if, or whatever it is, and if you can't have a dog there, that's your best buddy. You're not going to be there. So. What can you do leading up to that purchase? You know what? It's a little bit tricky because um, it doesn't have to be the owner of the property either. It can be an occupant for mm. a time. Um, so, you know, I, I think between uh, yourself, um, uh, your, um, someone who comes to stay with that dog or uh, someone else who lives in the unit, I think you, there's probably good cause for companionship yep. across those people um, in order to get one. Um, so it's, it doesn't, you know, it can also be, um, it, you can actually apply for a yeah. tenant. So if you're, if you're an owner who wishes to move in and you've got a prospective tenant, um, that's going to be moving in for a short term, six months or something, you could apply for yeah. that tenant, um, for the companion, under the companionship rules. It can't be, um, they can't, it can't be knocked back, um, the people on the body corporate that are actually voting to knock it back have got to be very careful about their selection of their yeah. pets because they can't be viewed as um, unfair. Yep. They can't be viewed as, as victimising people um, with pets. So, um, you know, for their own benefit. So they've got to be very, very careful that they act in the interest of the whole building of the body corporate when they make these decisions. And these guys that are on the body, body corporate often don't want to make yeah. that call. They'd rather just say, if, if they, if they'd rather just sort of say yes, rather than look down the barrel of, um, you know, we're being mistreated and um, this is not fair and uh, we're yep. suffering and you're not helping. So probably a like very that. sensitive so often body topic and it probably sways in the favour of the purchaser or the tenant with the occupant of the dog. Nicole um, made a good comment. Nicole Conway, any relation to Mark Conway? Um, with the yeah. with the insurance, I think because the rental bond landlords already feel like the four weeks isn't enough, and if there's a pet there, we can't take an increased bond. Um, but that tenant insurance, I think that's just vital. If you're a landlord and you don't have that insurance, I think it's get it um, because that covered our topic. What we said yesterday with a, a younger tenant without the experience guarantor, that insurance will cover up to twenty five thousand dollars of damage. With a landlord, let's face it, if you're not living in the building and you don't know the other, if you don't know the other owners in the building, you're probably not as worried about the dog um, making noise. You're more worried about your asset and it still being in good, reasonable condition. So 
that insurance can protect you up to $25,000 of damage and 15, 16 weeks rent. So I reckon that's vital. And because a lot of people either they don't know or they just, in, a lot of landlords instantly steer away from not having animals within the premises, it's a great opportunity to get some extra money in that rental return. Because let's face it, yields, rental yields on the Northern beaches have gotten a little, uh, have, have dropped. Um, so you need to be looking yep. elsewhere. So if you can get a, what we had talked about yesterday, Mark, an 18 year old and charge them a little bit extra because most people say no to them. Same with a pet owner. If most people are saying no, you charge yeah, them a little a bit point. extra. So even though the market may have come back $50 yep. for your, for your A grade tenant, which everybody wants, we're not saying these are B grade tenants. We're just saying you've just got to add an extra layer of protection or look a little bit closer there's a great way to get that rent to what it was or what it currently is. So I reckon um, what, anything to add on that, Mark? I reckon it's a great opportunity to get some higher returns. It, look, Good morning, Amal. It, Lisa Novak's on. It sounds a bit... Hey, Amal. Hey, Chris. It sounds a bit opportunistic saying we're going to whack tenants a little bit more if they're young or we're going to whack them if they've got a dog. But at the end of the day, these, these prospective tenants are actually willing to pay a slight premium for yeah. the privilege. Um, so if they're willing, if you're, if you're willing to ask and they're willing to yep. offer, um, there's a deal there. We're not, we're not insisting. No, no. Um, but if it's going to, if it's going to help our, our, our lovely landlords make a decision easier, cause it, you know, you're going to pay the tenancy insurance or you're going to pay a little yep. bit more in rent. I well, whack, a well, whack, you may not be the best word, but supply demand. If you've got three tenants who are 18 yeah. years old and there's only one prop rental property that will accommodate them. You're going to get more money if your agent's half as good. Like, simple. So, whacking probably not the great supply big demand. Time, time. So, position yourself as a landlord and your property to yep. appeal to all tenants. Yep. Um, young, yep. with animals, and all tenants. And look, we're, we're in a good position to have this conversation. We manage uh, 3,000 landlords and tenants um, properties and um, we're really exposed to this on the northern beaches and, and it's it's what we see and, and particularly in sales yeah. like we had a sale just just go through recently where the um, the vigilant body corporate just said no to the application of the purchaser so the purchaser actually applied before uh, they purchased the property um, now you know I, I won't say the address or the yeah. suburb but um, this this tenant was um, being uh, wasn't being treated yeah. well um, by the body corporate by this by this denial. Now the dog was the dog was a big dog, probably as big as they get, and the and the owners and the body corporate just said absolutely mm. not. We don't think that's suitable. But culturally, where the the tenant was from, this was a common dog, um, so they um, they associated well with with that with their, where that which country they were from, and also um, they were actually on the victims register. Um, in New South Wales. So it was like, how can you say no yeah. um, to that as a body corporate? And, you know, they were rem the owners of the body corporate were reminded of their responsibilities mm. to under the companionship rules and stuff like that. So I think that um, it's it, these days everyone's got a pet. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't know about you, but it well, just seems like <laughs> maybe 10, 20 years ago. You I wanted a one? pet and I thought I'd start with a bonsai tree. I heard they're the unkillable and I killed a bonsai within like three, four months if that was possible. So I don't think I'm responsible enough. Yeah. So I really want a pet. Started with a tree. You can't even really look after yourself. Yeah. You can't look after yourself and never mind a bonsai well, tree. Proven. So <laughs> I'll stick to, yeah. Well, you're doing, you're doing a good. You're doing a good job lately. I think. What's what's what have you done, Michael? Uh, Michael's doing MMA fighting yeah. at the moment, and you're you're a bit of a beast with yeah, your exercise. Yeah, Women's Warrior Training Academy down in Brookvale, <laughs> uh, six month boot camp. So I'm up about three, uh, three fifty five, four a.m. training for an hour and a half, and then I'm in here by just before seven, and then we go live. So it's um I'm That's loving the structure. Nuts. So as Tom Panel says, five a.m. Now I'm doing the four a.m. Got to one up it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh. So yeah, you're going, sounds like you're going towards three. Yeah, no, get in there, get in there. <laughs> I like the morning. And what time do you go to bed? Uh, 9.30. I try and be in bed by nine. Yesterday I crashed at 8.30. Fuck, it's early. But back in the day solid. running the solid, running solid. dominoes, and, I was and, night hours or up at two or three. And then you go to bed and you're, yeah, it's different, different, different. 
It's good. I do. I, I love the morning. The morning walk. So guys, is great, it's refreshing. It is. It is. It's pretty impressive. Um, I, I think that no one, no one can hold you down. And for a lot of people that don't know, Michael's had spinal surgery three um, <laughs> on three occasions yeah. now. And uh, he wrestles in his MMA fighting a um, couple times a week. On oh, the audio wig, that oh, just something Michael the Bruce. I think I, I missed all that. Just as you were talking, singing my praises. What are the odds? The audio uh, cuts out. Uh, yeah, uh, I got you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what were you saying? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 um, oh, yeah, the wrestling that you do, you know, with the spine and stuff, and it reminds yeah. me of the Bruce Lee story when he got his back broken. So that's pretty cool. Have you watched it yet? No, not yet. So, but the Into end of the, the dragon. Day, no, you got to watch it. And, yeah, the doctor says I'm going to be in pain, so I'd rather be fit and active and in pain rather than doing nothing. And I find I'm, I'm generally in more pain if I do nothing. So everyone's got excuses. Everyone's got injuries. You've just got to keep powering through it. Um, if I can do it after three neck surgeries, I'm, I'm pretty zero to 100. So I'm sure there's a lot of um, other activities I could be doing which are a little bit safer. But fuck it. I'm having fun. Not fun. Not fun. <laughs> you yep, you're having fun. Mate, have a great day. Guys, hope we helped you on pet policies and pets in body corporate. Yes. Um, so in, interesting, interesting combination. It is a lot easier these days and uh, certainly go for gold. Don't, don't, um, don't be weak on your applications, but, you know, go forth, get, get your pet approved. If you're a prospective yep. tenant, if you're, if you're a, um, a prospective purchaser, but don't forget the application has got to come in through the landlord. Yes. Um, so the, 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 so the, the inevitable person is landlord to body corporate, body corporate to landlord for the decision. Um, so it won't actually happen. Um, you know, if you're a tenant right into the body corporate, well, what say, about this mark? Go what away. do you reckon some tenants? And I know a lot of time we just say, let's just wing it and, uh, let's just move in with the animal. Would you suggest that? Where, where, how does, how do you see that play out? Cause I think a lot of people, what's that saying? Uh, it's better to beg for forgiveness and ask permission. Does, does that sort of apply for the animal or do you reckon just be straight up? Because what happens if you move in with the animal? How quickly can they kick you out or not? Oh, What's your thoughts here? I think you've got to be pretty careful if, it, if, you're, if, you're, um, if, you're, if you're throwing fuel into yep. a fire. Uh, it could explode. Um, but I think there are some body corporates where everyone would just would rather uh, have it there and not, and not know about it than have it there and approve yes. it. Um, so some body corporates I've seen that people actually don't get pulled up on it because body corporates like, you know what, if you put an application, we're just going yeah. to have a fight. We don't want to have a fight. Cause then if we have a fight, we've got two other people in the block that we've got to approve. We don't want to approve them. Yeah. Um, so also yeah, what I'll say is people sometimes forget strata body corporate or strata, they're owners. So there's nothing wrong with what you're saying where it's some blocks are quite relaxed. Go to the unit block, speak with the other occupants in there. And if they're mostly owners yeah, and they yeah. go, no, we don't care. We've got three dogs here. Everyone's pretty relaxed. That's a really good indication because let's face it, Strata, generally they're not out there inspecting the properties or uh, they're more reactive. If someone calls complaints about the dog, yep. then they're going to uh, jump on it or attack. So, <laughs> um, but if you've already spoken with all the owners and everyone's fine with it, the precinct's been set, different story, case by case. But... I think a lot of people, they hide yep. behind the emails. They hide behind Strata. Get face-to-face -face with the other yeah, occupants there. Good advice, Just say, good hey, advice. I have this dog. Yep. Are you okay with it? Even though you yep. know you'll probably get it approved, it's a really good way. It's a good way to suss out. Yep. You go, you're going to be that narc in the building. He's going to give me shits. I'm going to go to the other property. Or no one fought, or, or you really love that unit and you know you're up for a bit of a battle. So then you get your ducks in a line. You get your doctor letter. You get your history. You you get your dog resume. You have you have all of it prepared. So we are in a, a yep. society hiding behind cameras and emails, face to face. And the people that you're dealing with on body corporate, like body corporate's a tough job. Yeah. Um. So body people that are on the executive committee, they um sometimes these are people that are a bit, a bit vigilant. So you you've got to sort of play to their yep. strengths. Um, with those guys, you know what I mean. So I think you, you've got to, 
you, you know, eyeballing these guys and, and knocking on their doors a lovely yeah. thing to do. As Nathan uh, says, keeping it real. Otherwise you're in this Just silly... keep it real. Be human. Simple yeah. as that. I love the animals, <laughs> yeah. Angelo. And, and... <laughs> Angelo. Angelo. All right, I think we're good. I think we I think we've um hopefully added some value yep. to someone. Guys, if you know anyone that want that is trying to get a pet into a building or is is on this, share this share yep. this with them please. Um get it out there. And Lisa said for me Tag to get a wife, so and... if you know any single ladies, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, so so Bird you're single <laughs> and um how old 27. are you? Twenty seven. Twenty seven single Heaps of money, um, you know, very, very handsome. Not too bad on the eyes. Uh, smart. Um, and um, you, you're willing, you know, you preferred blonde brunettes. You're, you're pretty open. Yeah, pretty open. But you can't... Siri said she doesn't, Siri just said, Siri just said she doesn't know how to respond to that on my watch. <laughs> oh, well, Siri doesn't know. I'm fucked then. <laughs> oh, I'll just oh, focus on work gold, and my fighting. Simple. Gold. Focus on me. <laughs> focus, focus. That's it. All right, guys. Speak to you soon. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. See you, everyone.